Hey, what's up guys? It's Tobin. This will be the final screencast of 2013. We've all made it another year. Uh, so, cheers. Uh, I haven't done a screencast or a, a blog post in a while. Again, apologize. I feel like I keep doing that, but uh, next year is going to be better. I know this because I've made a resolution. Uh, I don't have anything big or specific to talk about in this screencast. I have a couple little things that I think are kind of useful and interesting. I thought we'd go over those and then do the whole year-end uh, paperwork with predictions and resolutions and other stuff that no one should probably really do because we're all going to forget about it in March. But I'm going to do it anyway. So first, tip. Uh, everyone uses Google Analytics uh, more or less. It's, uh, it's, it's just really great at what it does. It's fast, it's stable, um, and even if it's violating your privacy somewhat, it's not you, it's your users, and that's a little bit nicer. Now, one thing with Google Analytics you can do that is very, very useful is tracking events on a page. I mean, you're tracking some stuff just with Google Analytics, page views and, and stuff about your users. You can programmatically track an event an event here is defined as really as anything you want. So you can track how often people click a certain button or turn on a certain layer or perform a certain action. You can track all of that stuff and it's very easy to do. Now, let's see, where's one of... This is our open, our open mapping site that has our open data, MIT license this year. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do with that is track what data is most popular, who, what data gets downloaded the most, and uh, as well as what formats are being downloaded. So what I did for that is these buttons, the ones that download stuff, have a class added to them. And it's like button-track or something like that. And in jQuery, I can simply, on that button.track class, when you click it, we're going to send a Google Analytics event. And GA is the, the current Google Analytics way that if you have a really old version, it was like underscore G or GA or something. But the syntax is fairly similar. You can see right when you, uh, right when you include Google Analytics in your page, it's making this GA object. Yes, I've got uh, JavaScript right here in my page shop. So we're doing a GA send and we're tell we're sending an event. We're saying Google Analytics, here's an event we want you to track. We're going to name it download and then we can add uh, attributes uh, to that or subcategories of that. And these are optional arguments. We're going to send the name of the layer and for each layer, we are going to send the format. And it's pulling that just from uh, data attributes on the HTML uh, button element itself. And those buttons get made as part of, it's, it's like an underscore template. So it just adds those attributes when it makes them. So on the Google Analytics end, it's kind of tricky to find. Uh, you go under your, uh, your Google Analytics, you go down to behavior and the events and then look at top events. We see that download event. You can click on that and here's all of the layers that were downloaded in order of the uh, events most at least. And this is really interesting. I would think our parcels, our, our streets would be fighting for number one. Number one is Mecklenburg County jurisdictions, just the county and city boundaries. Number one by, by, not by a whole lot, but I never would have guessed it would have been that popular. And then we go look at that further. By far the most popular format to grab that in is GeoJSON. I never would have guessed that either. Uh, I would have guessed uh, Shapefile by a long shot. Even though I love GeoJSON, it's Shapefile is kind of the uh, a lot of people downloading the data are like uh, desktop users and 
and that's what they're trying to get it as, GeoJSON was a much more popular format. This is very, very good to know. We could have layers that no one ever downloads that we could care a little less about. We have layers that we didn't realize people are really interested in and we might think, oh, you know, we should go check that layer and make sure everything's, you know, up to date and accurate in there. And you can track anything that way. You can track how often people use different controls on your page. You can track, uh, like in the next version of uh, the Quality Life dashboard, I'm going to track the metrics people look at as well as the neighborhoods people uh, are interested in. We might have a metric that costs 20 times more to collect than any other metric that no one cares about. We could spend that money bet much better on other things. We can, we can figure that out and, and spend accordingly. Now, if you're tracking how often people use a particular thing, like you wanna see if people use your opacity slider, uh, save you some time no they don't but you can in that scenario you'd really only want to track that once on a page view you would want to add another event every time they slide the opacity slider around uh, there's different ways to do that the probably the correct way the best way to do that is via the observer pattern or pub sub that way you can subscribe tracking that to that event and once that event fires you can unsubscribe it and it'll never track it again for for that that viewing of the page you can also do lame stuff like uh you know boolean i they click this once equals false and then set it to true and then if then but that's lame uh pub sub is much better for something like that so what's next let's talk about some dashboard stuff uh I really stylized up the page because it's December and no one works in December, so I had a little in the government, so I had a little free time. Um, so I added this, you probably can't see it, but this is like a very light linen background, so it has a slight grain to it. The map itself has this kind of worn graph paper background. Um, and, and these, these elements down here, this more information, it has a very slight uh, inset box shadow. So it almost looks like they're burned into the background. Uh, again, a little free time on my hands last week. But that's how that's getting stylized. A couple of things I wanted to point out here, if I can remember them. Ah, leaflet. Uh, you notice these controls are kind of flat looking. I got rid of the background. Um, leaflet controls are normally just stark white background and it really uh, did not work well with this kind of stylized map. To do that is very easy. Leaflet is, is so cleanly designed. Almost everything in Leaflet is easy. I ju you just right click on those controls and figure out what those backgrounds are. And give them a box shadow of none and a background of none. Clears it right up. Now you have very nice flat controls that go very good on this, this graph paper background. Um, another neat thing for SVG, one problem I noticed, I've got, uh, and this is all D3, all the graphics, all this over here is, is D3. I had these numbers showing like the county mean and then whatever your hovering ons mean. And, but the problem with showing them on a graph this way is that if you have dark text over here, it looks good, but you can't see it over here and vice versa. So what I'm doing is I'm applying an SVG Gaussian blur, uh, a filter. So this stuff that is highlighted in yellow is what my mouse is on gets a slight yellow background to offset it. The other stuff gets a slight white background to offset it. Now, how to do that, uh, first you have to make that filter, and that's not something you're probably gonna write by hand. So you just pull up Inkscape, which is uh, the awesome. And we'll just put a background on here so we can see our text. Add some text. And then we'll 
grab it and go to filters and here you can just play around until you find something you like I think that was a darken glow and what it's doing there is it's taking the text color and using that to uh, see if I can like the text color here is now yellow it darkens the yellow till it's pretty much black and then takes that color it originally was and glows it out to the sides so you want to have your text something like white here which would make it uh, uh, dark text and white back glow or you know whatever if you pick something dark it's probably not going to help you very much so I just did that and from there you can either uh, look at the XML it's making for that in the defs section of your SVG or you can save the file out and it's a little bit easier to just pull the SVG up in notepad and grab that once you've done that you can just stick that right in your right in your SVG now here again I'm I'm a little weird the the typical way you see D3 done is it like adds the SVG to the page via JavaScript and I don't really like that um, there's probably a really good reason about it I'm just being particularly dense but I really like to add the SVG myself and then just put some data related stuff into it via D3 so here we have the SVG already on the page and I just add that filter in my definition section and from there I can just go into the into the CSS and for that mean text I'm giving that text uh, for those means a class I'm just giving it a filter URL and then this is I left it with the ugly thing uh, Inkscape call stuff I should probably fix that that just adds that filter and then you've got text you can actually see regardless of the background more or less I might need to screw with that yellow a little bit that's adding uh, an SVG filter and another neat thing about leaflet I'll tell you two more things and I'll shut up uh, no one uses opacity sliders no one no one no one uses opacity sliders uh, but sometimes you need that functionality is kind of handy here you see this is all very dark when I add a a base map it's technically an overlay in leaflet but I just call it base map see the opacity it becomes uh, less opaque or more opaque less opaque so you can see through it and see what's underneath it so we'll go in somewhere tight here you can start to see the stuff underneath it because it has an opacity of like 0.6 turn the base map off it darkens back to an opacity of 1 and it does that automatically for the user how that is done is there is a there is a overlay add and overlay remove event on the map there's also a base map add and remove as well um, I'm adding it here as an overlay because with the layer control and leaflet you can't like unswitch off all base maps and that's kind of what I want the default setting to be so that's why it's an overlay so what I'm doing is when an overlay added is added since I only have the one I know which one it is I set the opacity of the SVG path on the neighborhoods to 0 0.6 I remove it I set it back to one or completely opaque now since I only have one map uh, or one overlay that's very easy you can also it passes this variable on the event or passes a variable to the function from there you can get the name of the layer so if you have more than one layer and if you want to do different things for different stuff you can capture the layer and kind of do an if then uh, function within that event so do different things for different layers here I have one layer so I don't care and that's how I can get rid of the opacity slider that no one ever uses 
I simply set the opacity to something that's smart for the user if they turn a base map on. So, piece of cake. Not much else to say about where this thing is right now. There's, there's still quite a bit to do with it. I'm like dorking on it very little. Um, just really get some free time because it's so far ahead of when the data is going to be ready. I changed the select to a chosen because there's so many variables. Chosen is a jQuery extension that essentially turns a select box into a stylized select box with a search. Uh, so you can do, uh, you know, what, whatever you want, population. Uh, and it's kind of neat. It'll, it searches not only on the options, but on opt group, opt group as well. So if I just start typing in environment, it'll straighten me to that opt group. You can go straight there. That is a really uninteresting variable. I want more colors. Give me more colors. Ah, pretty. So that's using chosen. Uh, this graph paper background is, I'm just setting an image background to the, you know, pound map, the, the map div on the page. That's where that comes from. So that's all pretty straightforward from there. But that's just a collection of just unrelated tips, things you might find useful. Uh, now let's get into the really serious business of predicting what's going to happen next year. I won't rehash what I predicted last year because, of course, I got everything right and there's just no sense in even talking about it. Next year, I think GIS people are going to start taking performance seriously. Uh, you almost never see someone develop a GIS application with you know the perf tools and the dev tools up and going you know i'm under 60 fps here what the hell is going on you never see that really with gis folks and i think we're going to start seeing that i don't think people will accept uh, slow performance anymore and as we get into the age where over half your visitors are probably going to be on a tablet or a phone or something slow Performance is going to really matter a lot. And that's performance in terms of JavaScript performance, CSS performance. It's in terms of download size. I think we're going to have to start taking that more seriously than we do. And I think we're going to do that. Uh, I think we're also going to start taking uh, UI, UX stuff a little more seriously. Uh, that will be a much longer haul. The reason being is that UI UX people and GIS people are not the same people. And if you've ever had a chance to work with a GIS person like me, uh, we're kind of a pain in the ass to work with. So it's, that's going to be a slower haul, but I think that's going to start happening. And finally, we will kill Internet Explorer 8 dead. It will be off my radar. Windows XP goes uh, belly up, I think in March. So March or April. And that was the one thing holding a lot of people on IE8 was that Microsoft refused to backport newer versions of Internet Explorer back to XP. That problem is going to go away. Internet Explorer 12 will be out by the end of 2014. We're going to kill Internet Explorer 8, and the world will be a much, much better place as a result. Now for some resolutions. And I won't go back through my last year's resolutions uh, because, again, I made all those happen, and I, I, I don't want to brag about it, so we'll just forget it. Uh, next year's resolution, I'm going to get my particular tiny little enterprise. By that, I mean I'm really talking about me. I, I, don't, I don't have any people. Uh, I mean, I work with a lot of people, but I don't like own them. So my little part, we're going to, I'm going to try to start pushing us into hosted stuff, more into the cloud. Mecklenburg County is still a very much, uh, we host it place. I'm willing to wager if I could get 50 bucks a month on a credit card, I could probably replace two thirds of our infrastructure for 50 bucks a month. I could replace a 
half a dozen servers easy uh, things are so cheap now I Amazon is still a little pricey but you can host like Postgres and PostGIS right in Amazon uh, yeah OpenShift is really really interesting just plain old VPS like you can get uh, I think on DreamHost for five bucks you can get a decent server with a 20 gig SSD and if you've never tried solid state uh, you, if once you do you'll never ever go back so a really great performing server like five bucks a month five bucks you could put node on there and a bunch of tile sets you could probably power every website you own there you could do any of that five bucks a month so I gotta get us we're I've got to get us out of uh, local hosting all this stuff it's just a huge waste of time money and energy and the uptime we get is is not impressive so second thing gonna get more into open street map I probably said that last year and the year before um, but what I mean by that is not so much us using OpenStreetMap is us giving back into OpenStreetMap. This was a problem before because of how we sold our data and licensed our data. Our data is now MIT licensed. It should not be a problem. Because the big hurdle was our data, I mean, in a lot of cases is better. So there was no great impetus to use OpenStreetMap even though we get the surrounding area and some data, I mean, OpenStreetMap is like a bottomless well of stuff. So we get data we didn't have. Uh, but if we can start pushing our data back up into OpenStreetMap because of the licensing, we can get that accurate data and get all the surrounding data and uh, shoot, maybe we'd even toss out some of these really expensive, slow data maintenance apps we have and just use like the it editor and life would be great so I want to get into that I want to blog more uh, and that's really about it my blogging I, I watch how it's gone over the course of the year it's just gotten slower and slower down, now I'm down to like maybe once or twice a month um, it's been a busy end of the year but some of that is uh, could be PlayStation related so gonna start doing more of that and I'm going to stop drinking soda because, by golly, I'm nearly 20 years old and uh, I should stop doing that. I think it kills you slowly. Or quickly. Now, it's got to be slowly because I'm almost 20. Well, that's it. Uh, I hope everyone has a great holiday. Uh, be happy and be safe. Have a great new year. And we'll be seeing you. If I can close this recording. Stop. Keep